Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Thursday, July 21st, 2016. I wanted to do this video to tie in a lot of what I posted lately. Uh, analysis overall has been on the light side, um, just due to market conditions and, and, and not a lot of new developments. However, right now, it appears to me that a lot of the things that I've posted recently and some other things that I haven't covered are now coming together. And um, I think we could be, you know, on the precipice of one of the, the, the best shorting ops, possibly. There's some work to be done. And I'll go over that, but this could be one of the most lucrative shorting ops in uh, this year, possibly, and and even beyond. And you know, this year alone, we had that huge drop in January down to the February lows. So um, let's let's just dive into the charts, and I'll let you be the judge of uh, what's going to happen here. But uh, I'll tell you what I see, and and I'll make my case. All right, this chart is the S and P 500 daily chart, spans two years. I've covered this chart quite a bit. I've posted it in static form, meaning a still shot, and uh, also uh, covered this. I even did a video on this while I was out on vacation a week or so ago. Uh, so just to rehash it for those of you that missed it, back in 2015, we had a series of three divergent highs. You know, prices making higher highs against the MACD and the RSI making lower highs. Each of those three resulted in a correction. Um, but it was really uh, all three, as they were consecutive, as just one large divergent high from this point to this point here. And that gave us this huge drop, really, because that marked the highs back in 2015. And we never saw those highs again until just recently. So this was really the result of those divergences, how they played out. Now we have three consecutive divergences. Uh, well, I should say the third is potential. I'll get to that in a second. This one was confirmed, and we had a uh, nice correction. The second one was confirmed, nice correction. And now we have potential divergence. By potential, I need to see, or I would like to see, a bearish crossover on the MACD. So this blue line comes down below the white line. Uh, we're already seeing it roll over, which is, is so far so good for the bearish case. Uh, you can see it flattening out there. The MACD has flattened out pretty much, that top line. Now it needs to turn down and then cross over, and that will confirm that divergence. The RSI has already rolled over off a lower level, made it put in a lower low. And, uh, you know, so far, yeah, we, we weren't down much today. It was only third of a percent, so it looks like a big red candlestick, but I wouldn't, it really can't take too much from today's action. We're probably going to have to wait until early next week to see if any of this materializes, but... Uh, all right, by being stacked, let's now look at the 60-minute time frame. About a week or so ago, or over the last week, I highlighted bearish rising wedge patterns on the 30-minute index charts, or at least on the SPY and QQQ. I did that on the 30-minute because we didn't have divergence yet on the uh, NASDAQ 100. We had it on the SPY, just barely. You can see it here up to this point. Uh, the SPY broke down and has really gone nowhere. If I put the crosshairs where we broke down last week, you can see today we closed right at that same level. So we're really, we've gone sideways and we went as about 30 basis points higher from that point. So we've really gone nowhere but sideways. Uh, so, you know, glass half full, you're bullish, you say, oh, the bears can't take this market down for anything. And glass half empty, you say, well, we broke down from bearish rising wedge just as we did pass back here. Uh, we push back up. We didn't fall initially. Push back up to above the breakout point where we broke down from, and then the selling kicked in. And so anything can go. Anything can happen from here. But based on the look of this charts, I strongly favor a downside move. In fact, I, I, I'm holding off, but I want to let you know that I'm ready to pull the trigger on official short trades for the broad market soon, as well as a handful of others on my watch list, individual stocks. Um, you know, been, I've been cautious lately. They're just, we haven't had the sell signals. This rip was strong and you can't short it. You know, I've, I've thrown out a couple of trade ideas. We've had a couple stopped out recently, but uh, for relatively small losses. But the point being, uh, is is be ready if you are a short side trader or if you agree with this analysis and by all means if you want to short here and put stops above um, I can tell you it, it looks pretty objective this uh, looks like a very good shot that by tomorrow or next week we'll have these sell signals confirmed and what I mean by that you know had you shorted this wedge back here when it broke down 
uh, it wasn't yet confirmed. We had another push back up just above the breakout point. It was to this point where I put the crosshairs down here where the 1333 trend indicator crossed and the 9 EMA, my trend indicator with the 9 EMA on that MACD moving below the zero line, both of those confirmed right there. So they told you, okay, at that point it was safe to get in the water and short. And uh, the market dropped. And we had a push back up, failed to even get back to the breakout point. You can see there, that's where we broke out. And this was a move you captured by going with that trend indicator and staying short until you know, we had, I should clarify, we had a we had a whipsaw signal here. Um, and I don't see, yeah, that, that, I think, what was that? Oh, that was the Brexit. That was the Brexit meltdown. Yeah. But either way, that, that, it, it got you short there and told you to stay short. There was no, I don't think we had any um, buy signals here, but if you recall on the site, I did post with the IWM, it actually right there hit support, and that's where I posted covering, you know, the IWM short and some other shorts right after, because we hit uh, support on the daily charts. And that, again, goes back to why I use different time frames. You won't always see something on a 60-minute chart, and I can tell you this, if you do see two levels, one on a 60-minute chart, one on a daily chart, Go with that level on the daily chart. The longer the time frame, the more significant that support or resistance is. All right, so back on task here. All right, so that's what I'm looking for. Break below this level here would probably trigger that selling right in this the horizontal line. It's at 20, 21, almost 21.57 uh on the s p 500 that'll bring us down to at least that 2115 area in my opinion that's that would be my minimum downside target and again you want to see these trend indicators confirm jumping back to the daily chart real quick what will that do if i'm correct and we go down to the 2115 area uh let's say even say 2116 right here yeah, I call it 2117. Looking at the daily chart, holding that line, I see this reaction here, this previous reaction. That would be my minimum target. Now, what would that do? It would, if it happens in the next day or two, the move starting, uh, we start to move lower in the next day or two. That will give me the bearish crossover that I'm looking for and confirm this divergence. This is very big to me. If we get this divergence confirmed um, and see some impulsive selling down there, that would measure out or indicate a move much larger than a drop down to 2017, much larger than that, you know, 1.7 or less than 2% drop. It would indicate something more on the scale of what we had here or here, just based on these divergences. It would also mean that the f new highs failed. We had the new highs were broken out. I'm going back, if you look right here, back in 2015. So that was around 2133-ish. It would take us under that level. Uh, I will say, just to you know, to keep some balance here that um, it's not, if we, if that new high fails on the S&P, it's not the end of the world. From my experience, a lot of new highs uh, are back tested. And when they're back tested, that back test takes it, takes prices back into just below where the previous high was. I don't know whether it's intentional to run the stops, shake a few people out, but that, that would be relatively healthy price action. So draw it out, you know, if, so if you're bullish, and I'm correct in the near term with that 60-minute chart scenario. We come back in, we we give up the new highs, but then you go, you buy it the support here that I just mentioned at 2117, and then we could blast off the new highs. <clears throat> Keep in mind that's going to have that negative divergence. Uh, you buy there, I'll stay short because I don't go long. I don't buy breakouts to new highs with negative divergence on the daily chart. I just don't do it. Uh, I'd rather see the market walk away from me than go against my you know, my, my trading style and something that I've done for years. Uh, so this is the S&P on a weekly chart. Um, not a whole lot to discuss there. Let's go on the NDX. Oops, wrong one, NDX. NDX, there's a weekly chart there. You can see the primary trend line in purple, breakdown back test. Then you see this white uptrend line, breakdown back test. But what I wanted to show you on the NDX is another scenario. Some of you have probably pointed this out or noticed this. There's a potential head and shoulders pattern, a very large one forming on the NASDAQ 100. And I'll zoom in here. You have a left shoulder here, this left shoulder, a head, and then a right shoulder. Now, you want to see symmetry on head and shoulder patterns, or at least somewhat symmetry. So the fact this is a very large left shoulder is fine because so far this has been a large right shoulder. 
And uh, what we'd need to see from here, however, in order to keep that symmetry intact, we're getting really close to the head. I wouldn't want to see the NASDAQ go up any more than where we're at right now. So just one potential scenario to watch for. And what you'd need to see is a reversal very soon. Uh, that would be down to the neckline, probably have a bounce there and then a move down. This is just the measured target if it does play out. Take the move from the head to wherever the neckline breaks, and that would take us down to about the 3200 level or so on the NDX. But more importantly, this head and shoulders pattern, if that is what it is or proves to be, is confirmed so far with volume patterns, and that's what uh, I think a lot of people fail to do on a head and shoulders. You want to see vo increased volume and impulsive selling off the formation of the head, so from the head down. And if you look down below, we had those in the increase in volume. And you also want to see the same thing on the formation of the right shoulder after the top's been put in. Impulsive move down and an increase in volume. So those are things I'll be looking for. And again, that's whether that happens or not. Uh, I'm more focused right now on these daily divergences. You still have divergence, but we really need to turn down soon on the NDX um, or those divergences get burned through. Uh, I want to say that it's not the end of the world. Uh, if divergences are burned through, especially I'm tracking all these indices, I'm tracking the NASDAQ composite, the NDX, the small caps, mid caps, you name it. Um, if one or two indices burns through their divergence and the others don't, and then we start to reverse and they have confirmed divergence, that that's fine. Um, you know, back in 27, uh, 2007, the market top, uh, we burned through divergence on the MACD. I think we still had it on the RSI. Some indices had it, some didn't. Uh, so it's not a, a complete, it's not an absolute requisite to see uh, divergent high on a market top. Uh, but it is an indication. These are momentum indicators and they just show waning momentum and uh, an impending or a likely trend change. Uh, so I've already given the levels that we need to see. And uh, at least I went over on the... Uh, on the SPY, was it? I think I gave you a level on the SPY. Here's the NDX uh, on the 60-minute chart. Just jumping back. There's that rising wedge pattern. Uh, we didn't have divergence on the 60-minute before, but we do now. See, after we broke down from the wedge, the NDX moved higher in this broadening, ascending broadening wedge pattern. Now we have that negative divergence that I like to see on the 60-minute chart. It's across the board on every index that I'm following negative divergence. I'm just waiting uh, these sell signals across on the 1333 MA on the NDX, the S&P 500. I want to see that 90 MA cross below. Uh, let's look at the Russell. I don't know if I have that one marked up or not. Uh, well, I don't have it marked up as far as uh, this chart here, but I can tell you here's a little pattern to watch right here. You can see some pretty well you know, the NASDAQ or the Russell 2000s in the sideways trading range. So really a break below this level and especially below that 1191 level, that previous reaction high, that will take us lower. That will give us a confirmed sell signals. It's white line crossing down below the 90 MA on the MACD, uh, 1333. And uh, what else can I show you on the, on the Russell? Uh, these beautiful FIB fan lines that have defined this whole bull market, uh, the previous bull market, then Russell's still well off its highs and already dropped more than 20%. So uh, we're back testing that last final FIB fan line just as we broke down and back tested all these other ones before. Um, mid caps, uh, don't forget about the mid caps. They're a very important segment of the market. This is the S&P 500, uh, S&P mid cap 400 index, and uh, just a beautiful clean chart. Uh, it's a big a very well-defined bull market primary uptrend line right here off the 2009 lows terminating in a wedge pattern I don't have it drawn here you can do it and you could add lines and you can see that uh, take a second to do it we had you know that wedge was confirmed by divergence and um, we broke down pulse of breakdown back tested the wedge back tested back tested up here and so far turned down now we're we're testing those highs so right now at this point we have a double top high potential double top high in the mid cap um, 100 or mid cap 400 index excuse me and this is a story with the mid caps we're in this sideways trading range and if a double top pattern if you look this up on the internet you'll see the uh, you know the definite the criteria for double top pattern this is if if we reverse here we need to reverse here this is the bottom 
range of that double top pattern. And so to calculate the move on the double top pattern, you take the uh, distance. Oops, I need to do a different screen tool. You take the distance of the pattern, which is this right here, and then add it to where it breaks down. And coincidentally or not, I didn't have this. I didn't use this level. Actually, if you put it right there exactly, then it would take you just a hair below my target. But this is my target before all is said and done in the mid cap. So whether we punch out to a new high, which so far will be a divergent high on the weekly chart, um, that's very solid support. And I think that's where the mid caps go down uh, before all is said and done. And that's going to be a, uh, you know, if that happens, it'll take a while to get there. That's a 34% drop. Uh... Here's the daily chart. You can see the divergent high back in 2015. There's a drop of over 20%. And now we still have, and this one's actually almost confirmed. You can see the MACD is, is already pointed down. We've curled down. We haven't made that cross yet. But uh, unless the mid caps can power higher and break through here and make a sustained breakout, uh, we're going to have negative divergence here. And that's a pretty steep divergent high. So that's something to watch for uh, on the mid caps. And then finally, yeah, I already covered the Russell, didn't I? Yeah, I believe I did. Uh, did I cover it on the daily chart? If I didn't, there it is. Negative divergence still in place. Triple triple divergence, consecutive divergence at key resistance. This is a, a, a key resistance zone that I mentioned before. And I'll wrap this video up just by letting you know, which I have in the on the site, but in different posts. Maybe this was in the trading room. This is the VIX, pardon all the other past trend lines. Well, actually we should note the past trend lines because what I've noted on here, uh, each of these levels, divergent low, prices on the VIX making a divergent low, divergent low, divergent, uh, divergent low, divergent low. So I've marked, this isn't cherry picking, I've marked every divergent low on here. Um, going back, uh, what is this, two years. And both on the MACD and the RSI, you can see the divert positive divergence in place. This green line, S2, I've had this level on my chart forever and a day. This is a uh, very, very important key long-term support level that has contained the VIX for years. And that's where we fell to the other day. We punched right through it intraday. You can see that little hammer right there. Came back up. And look, a pretty impulsive move today, 8.4, 8.24. Now that's not huge. 8% move in the VIX is just run of the mill on a, on a you know good day. But the fact that we had that impulsive move off that divergent low, a couple more days like that, and we're going to have bullish divergence here on the VIX right here. Pretty powerful to bullish divergence. And so that just kind of meshes with the my analysis on the S&P 500. So if all this comes together in the next couple days or next week or so here, possibly next day or two, uh, what we would be looking for is a reversal. Uh, pretty much any downside, a percent or two should do the trick. Get those divergences confirmed, confirm those 60 minute trend indicators, uh, you know, and, and eventually confirm this bullish divergent low in the VIX, that divergent high on the daily time frame on the S&P, mid cap, small caps, NASDAQ, you name it. And we're looking at um, what could be the next, you know, nice trend to trade on the short side. Um, and if you're bullish and all that stuff is wiped out, taken out, then kudos to the bulls, kudos to this market. Um, doesn't mean that the market's going to blast off and go up 30 or 40 percent. Um, we could just punch out. Maybe this market needs to have a, a blow off top. And, and uh, you know, if, if what we just saw wasn't a blow off top, I mean, goodness, you look at the move off the, you know, post Brexit lows and <laughs> that to me qualify easily as a blow off top. A um, little suspect on the volume. All right, guys, I'll wrap it up here. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, shoot me a private message or, you know, address it in the trading room or under the comment section on this post. And uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up on YouTube. I appreciate it. Thank you.